Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. I'm John, and I need a winch. I need a winch for my truck, but I also need a winch for my trailer, and it would be nice to have a winch for my tractor as well. And I'm talking about a heavy-duty winch, something that can pull like 12,000 pounds. Those things aren't cheap. I'm not buying three winches. So I've got an idea where I can do some fabrication that's going to allow me to use one winch on all three of those things. And by the way, Vivor reached out to me. They wanted me to test out their 50-amp plasma cutter. So I agreed to do that, and this is a sponsored video by Vivor. I'll be using some other tools in the fabrication as well, but where it makes sense, we're going to test out this plasma cutter, and I'm going to give you honest feedback on what I think about it. So let's get to work. Somebody forgot to hook up the ground clamp. That might make a difference. Wow. Piece of half inch steel, no problem. A little bit of slag on the bottom, but uh, all in all, that cut pretty well. So that wasn't my first cut with the plasma cutter, but it was one of my first. I cut that very easily. I've done, I've done a fair amount of cutting with a oxyacetylene cutting torch, and I've always found getting it to cut well, especially in thicker metal, is pretty tough. This seems to be very forgiving. I mean, there's some slag on there. That's probably operator error. Uh, maybe I need to change my settings a little bit. I don't know. I'll get it figured out, but first impression, that was pretty easy. Obviously doing a square cut with a plasma cutter when I have like a chop saw it doesn't make a lot of sense, but I, I wanted to give it a try, get a little practice with it.
All right, can you just holler if I'm gonna hit something? You know, give me give me a good heads up. Am I good? Don't let me hit anything. Don't. Oh! So I had this in mind with this shop design. It's pretty cool to be able to come in from the side like that because I've got 36 feet. Well, almost, not quite because of that wall. I always kind of picture it if I want to work on a boat or something, I might want to pull it in sideways like this, either in this bay or in this bay and or an RV or, or whatever. Have plenty of room. I still can bring the wall down, but getting the wall up out of the way gives me a lot more versatility. Let's make a way to mount this winch to the trailer. So you've probably figured out this system is centered around this two inch hitch receiver. This is a great material to use for things like this because it's mass produced, making it cheap, it's strong, and it's readily available. I mean, you can buy it at Walmart. With a hitch mounted to a two inch bar, anything I want to attach it to, I just need a piece of this receiver tube. Is that 12,000 pounds strong? Probably not, but you know, I don't really plan on pulling anything up here that's gonna, I mean, I could pull something that weighs 12,000 pounds up here without having to put that much force on it. The 12,000 pounds is more for skidding logs and stuff out of the woods, which this obviously will not be doing. If I have any issues with it, I can always weld on something on the back that would allow me to hook a chain binder like to one of the main beams here something like that maybe two of them even but i doubt i'll have any issues with that that's going to be pretty darn strong so i'm actually not done but i have something i need to go pick up so let's put this to the test now can we get this up here So I got it to this point knowing it's actually not done yet. I need to make a place to mount this on the front, which keeps the cable spooling correctly and, and doesn't allow it to go off to the side. So the bolts, the bolt heads are hitting and holding it out just a little bit. Wouldn't be a big deal, but also easy to fix. I'm actually out of black paint. I just want to get something on there. Next time I go to the store, I'll get some black and paint it right. Yep, don't worry. It's only temporary. I'll get that black paint on there just as soon as 10 years goes by and I notice a little rust on it. And since it's brown, I probably won't notice. Hmm, I seem to have lost my nuts.
that part's done. And there, it slots right into the hitch for the truck. And we're ready to go. I just ran it to the battery right there. And remember when I got my lift stuck? This was before I fixed the four-wheel drive. All right, now here's the real trick. How do I mount it to this and have it actually stay? This thing is real heavy here. So I've got a piece of this left over and I'm thinking, yep, that's what we're doing. So my loader has a little step and a curve here, kind of an oddball shape, so I made a template. You know, we're using CAD here, cardboard assisted design. So that is the shape I need. And then this is just a square cut. Not too shabby. That is surprisingly easy. I try to cut a little too fast on this one and you'll see that the sparks go up at a couple points where I'm traveling too fast for it to penetrate all the way through. And then I have to make some more cuts to finish it off. And there it is after some sanding. It's going to be pretty strong. All right, so there's the plan, but I need to be able to put that pin through. The hole's like right in there. You know, I could spend a bunch of time and try to get it all precise, but it doesn't need to be. The pin is not going to pull out of this receiver tube here. So an oversized hole there will work just fine. So let's do it the fast and easy way. Here I'm tracing that with soapstone. It's a mark that won't disappear with oxyacetylene heat and I assume the same with plasma cutting. Well, somehow I lost the footage of me cutting out that circle. Um, so I'm just gonna do it again on a rusty piece of half inch steel here. Got a nice hole in there. Let's see if I can do a better job on this one. So I don't know if you can see, there's a fair amount of bevel to it. So I'm gonna try to angle the plasma cutter to make the hole a little more square this time. I 
welded my standoff to the uh, to the face. Let me just take that off of there. I think I can do it better without it. to say I liked it better without the standoff. I think for your first few cuts maybe you do want that but I think that was easier to control. Yeah, not bad at all. There you go you can see how the first one had a lot more bevel to it and the second one is more square. Here's the oversized hole that I cut out with the plasma cutter. This will allow the pin to go all the way through. So that might be a little bit overkilled, but I don't want to have to worry about it. That's not going anywhere. coats of paint. Yeah, there's some runs there. This thing isn't going to any beauty contests. That's a cow dog. Cow dog. Poor big mama. Just, just get that dog off of me. She says, Oh, that feels good. You're my good girl. It's our farm dog. She's tough. <laughs> she smells bad. She loves, rolls she, and poo. She loves to roll and poo. She tells them cows how to do it. Let's ride right on their back. What's I doing? Oh. <laughs> she sat down. <laughs> Big mama, who's on your back? <laughs> well, I was thinking I was going to extend these wires, but um, this winch draws up to 300 amps, and that's a hefty wire that you need. Once you add any extension, you're increasing resistance, and uh, then I have to figure out a way to hook it onto the, the battery which is up underneath that. And if I just use jumper cable clamps, I don't think it's gonna draw the amperage that I need well and end up melting my posts and all that kind of stuff. So, decided against extending the wires. I've got brackets here that are for uh, removing the loader. Uh, 
there's bars in here that support the loader when you take it off. And I can use this to mount a battery tray. I always have a, uh, I call it a farm battery that I just use for various things. If I need to jump something for my sawmill, whatever. Uh, I've always got a battery laying around that, uh, that I use for that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna make a tray, put the battery there and hook it up. So I've got a couple lock nuts here. So you can probably see it's, it's at a tilt. Um, that's fine. The forks are all the way down as the forks come up this is gonna get more level. If it becomes a problem, I could make a pivot mechanism here that would allow me to adjust it, but that just seems silly. I don't think it's necessary. You ride vehicles on hills all the time, the batteries are at angles and it's not a problem. So I'm sure some people are gonna ask why I chose to put this on the loader. Frequently when I'm trying to pull logs, the the front, the leading edge, digs into the ground, and this is gonna allow me to, to pull the log up and along. So it should be a lot easier to pull with this. And uh, obviously I'm gonna have to be careful. There's enough force here that if the log really hangs on something and I'm pulling with 12,000 pounds, I can tip my tractor. So I'm just gonna have to be aware as I do it. I kinda wish this thing had a wireless remote, but it doesn't. But I can, this reaches all the way to the operator's seat and I could be well out of the way if I'm down on the ground and pulling, so it'll work. All right, let's talk a little more about this plasma cutter. Vivor sent this to me for free, uh, but the good news is they didn't give me any talking points. They just told me, try it out, do a review. So I can say whatever I want, which is really nice. I'm gonna spend more time in the video talking about this plasma cutter, not because I have to, but because I think it'll be good content for you guys. I own several tools from Vivor, and I have to say all of them basically perform as I would expect. I don't have any major issues with any of them. And, you know, Vivor makes uh, budget tools, they're, they're on the lower price end, but they do what they're supposed to do, which is what I'm after, um, especially for a DIYer. I'm not going to be using the plasma cutter eight hours a day every day. I'm going to be using it intermittently. It's going to sit idle for weeks, maybe even months. This kind of thing is perfect. A tool that doesn't cost too much and does the job is, is what I frequently want. Not always, but that's frequently what I'm looking for. That frees up more money so I can buy other tools. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Also, this is the only plasma cutter I've ever used. So take that into account. Up until now, the way I cut metal was a chop saw, a band saw, a hacksaw or a grinder, or uh, oxyacetylene. 
oxyacetylene is what I would use on thick, difficult things to cut. And don't get me wrong, oxyacetylene is a great system for cutting metal if you're good at it. But you've got you've to be good at it, and there's a bit of an art to it. You know, how much angle do you hold? How fast do you travel? Make sure you, you have enough heat in it. And uh, it, it's, it's not so easy. This is definitely easier, and I think this is going to be my go-to uh, frequently when I need to, to cut something. This thing comes with a really long torch, um, which is cool. You know, I like that. So I don't have to drag the unit around. If I'm working on something big, I can just have this nearby. Go grab the torch. We're ready to go. Now, for some reason, the ground clamp is not so long. I don't know what the thinking there is. Maybe you could bring this over to a table, and then the torch gives you full access to, like, a welding table. Um, that would be fine if that's your setup. That's not how I'm going to generally be using it. But the good news is, you know, all this is is a, a wire, and it's bolted on right there. So you can just get another wire, extend it out, and you've got a long ground clamp. That's super easy to fix. Uh, I do find it unusual. I would think that the length of the ground wire and the length of the torch should be the same, so they can reach the same distance. The unit seems well built. Comes with an air dryer on the back. Mounts well. And I really like this. This is a standard welding plug. So your welders use the same style plug. Uh, so if you have a welder, which you probably do if you have a plasma cutter, this is going to plug right into it and you're good to go. But the thing is, they also send uh, an adapter so that you can plug this into uh, 120 volts. You don't have to change anything on the unit, it just senses the voltage and you're good to go. Now, it can't cut as thick on 120 volts. And we'll test it in a minute. I kind of want to see what it'll do, like on just a regular 20 amp outlet. With the welding plug, I can push it all the way to its max, no problem. They do send you uh, a couple extra electrodes. These are the consumables. These are the things that you're going to have to replace. And this standoff isn't strictly necessary, but it is helpful when you're a beginner. So yeah, if I wanted to change out the consumables, this is what I'd be doing. And that's it. So if you'll permit me to nerd out for just a second, I think this is really cool. When they say plasma cutter, they actually mean plasma, the fourth state of matter. And when I was in school, they didn't explain plasma very much, but it's really not that complicated. It's just what happens when you take a gas and you continue to heat it. When you heat a solid, you get a liquid. When you heat a liquid, you get a gas. When you heat a gas, you get plasma. And what's happening to the gas, a gas is just atoms bouncing around, highly energetic. When you continue to add energy, they get to the point where the electrons strip off of the uh, nuclei. And now you have nuclei and electrons just bouncing around. Uh, so it's like an atomic soup. Uh, there's just too much energy there for the atoms to uh, stay together. It's ionized because you've got positive nuclei and negative electrons, so it's very conductive of electricity. And that's all it is. You know, a lightning bolt is actually plasma. It's superheated air that's conducting electricity from the clouds to the ground. So what's happening here, this thing does not have any holes in it. This is just an electrode, and it produces an arc from the end of this to the inside of this while at the same time compressed air comes out around it. It actually swirls to make a stream of air that then shoots out of that hole. So what you get is superheated air, so hot that it's ionized, it's no longer a gas, it's plasma. And that plasma just melts through pretty much anything. You do have to be careful with this. You would not want to stick your finger in front of this and pull that trigger. <laughs> you get a new one of these. I'm going to keep using this one because it's still good. Screw it in, snug it up, screw it in, snug it up, and there you go. Has a nice uh, cover. I wish my welder had that actually, so you can lay this down. It's not going to push the button. You have to push that out of the way and then push the button. Vivor does not sell these consumables. They're readily available for multiple manufacturers. You go on Amazon, they end up costing, I think, like two bucks to do a, a replacement. No big deal. Certainly cheaper than acetylene gas. We are now plugged into 120 volts, and what I've got here is an old piece of lawnmower blade. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna see if we can't cut that in half. That's quarter inch steel. Kind of interested to see if this is going to pop the breaker or not. We'll see. 
at 120 volts, 35 amps. Let's see what we get here. No problem at all. Curious if I turn it up to 50 amps, is it going to pop my breaker? Yes, it is. I'm going to try a piece of half inch. I really don't expect this to work and I should qualify. I am not using this machine as the manual recommends. If you're going to use it at 120 volts, they recommend a higher amperage outlet. But most people have 20 amp outlets, so I'm just seeing what we can do. Pop the breaker. Wasn't going all the way through either, so no. All right, same cut. I am now back on my welding plug, so this should go a lot better. And you see how that's beveled? That is because the, the plasma arc is actually beveled, so it's gonna make a beveled cut. Um, and you can compensate for that a little bit by tipping the arc and uh, making a good side and a more beveled side but you just expect that with a plasma cutter. Now I think a high dollar cutter would probably bevel less, but yeah, this is one of those things that uh, comes along with plasma cutting, at least that's my understanding. The other thing to consider with these is if it has a non-touch pilot arc. And what that means is this can strike its own arc without any metal nearby, like this. If you didn't have that, me pushing the button right now would not make an arc. It's kind of like a uh, stick welder. You have to tap it on the metal and get it to strike the arc on the thing that you're trying to cut. This option is like 10 bucks, I think, on the Vivor plasma cutter, so I would definitely recommend it. It just makes it one less thing for you to have to think about. Here's something you can't do with oxyacetylene. This is a piece of aluminum sheet. Let's see how this does. Wow, that cut like butter. <laughs> that is 16 gauge aluminum and uh, wow, it cuts like nothing. So here's another thing that I've been wanting to be able to cut for quite a while actually. This is a piece of stainless steel. I came outside because this stuff gives off fumes. You don't want to breathe when you're cutting it. But this should cut through this no problem. Oxyacetylene will not. Anything electrically conductive, this will cut through. Aluminum, brass, stainless, copper, and obviously steel. So like I said, this is the only plasma cutter I've ever used. But I'm impressed. I think for $240, this is a heck of a deal. And this is going to be a tool that I am going to use frequently in the future. So thanks to Vivor for sending me this plasma cutter. I'm impressed. I like it. If you're in the market for something like this, how do I put this? Because I'm not a plasma cutter expert. Uh, but I would say that if I took a gamble and bought this plasma cutter and brought it home and it did this, I would be very happy with my purchase. Take that for what it is and enough of the plasma cutter. I really want to take this thing out and put it to use, but it's getting dark now, so we're going to have to do that tomorrow. So that's going to be my first victim. I really don't need a winch to do that one. I could have just pulled up to it and put a long chain on it, but the winch is going to make it easier. It's those others that are back in the woods and not facing the right direction.
I was just starting to dig in a little bit. I was thinking it was going to dig in hard, and if that was the case, I was just going to lift up the forks so that I could get it up off the ground. It's going to make skidding these uh, much easier and keep, keep me from getting the logs so muddy. But this one I'm just going to drag right down the length of the driveway, so let's get this out of here. That one right there, that one's going to be a little tougher. It's parallel to the drive. There's a bunch of trees in the way. I've just got the tractor at an angle. And I'm going to try to basically pull it over towards me. And I may have to cut it. I don't know. It might end up getting wedged between a couple of these trees. Let's hook up and we'll see what it does. It might not be apparent how useful having this winch is. This ground, especially this time of year, is so soft. Getting the tractor over to that tree and trying to drag it out would be a mess. And in my previous video, several people wondered why I didn't use the boom lift. There is no way the boom lift was getting through those woods over to those trees. Yeah, that is so much easier. I used to do that lift up method, but then I'd have to get off and reset everything. Now I can lift up and then just pull in the slack with the winch and then do it again. So much easier. So I'm actually gonna have better luck if I just redirect that way. It'll be a straight pull. So I'm gonna move the tractor. there's my problem. These two limbs are getting wider and so it's wedged between these two trees. There, that should pull fine now. I hope.
guys are really in the way. I got those out of there. Now let's go to the other side of the driveway. This is just stuff that's fallen. That is half of a maple tree, which I'm not terribly interested in, but it's in the way of that. That is a white oak tree that uprooted several years ago and landed on this rock. You can see it's been up off the ground, almost the entire thing. And uh, that's like ideal firewood. And you know, why let it sit here and go to waste? We like to kind of keep the area near the drive cleaner anyway. So I'm gonna pull these two out of here, uh, mainly to get that and burn it. And for anyone who's worried about me robbing the habitat of uh, animals and, and critters that live in dead trees, they're everywhere. There's one right there, a real big ash. I'm gonna leave that stump. There's another dead tree there. There's another one over there. I mean, they're everywhere. Look around, I'm surrounded by forest. I think the critters are fine. As long as I don't put anything too heavy on there, I can even use the forks with the winch in place. That's what I'm after. We're looking perpendicular to the drive. And I'm going to do another thing that this winch is going to allow that I think is going to make logs like this a lot easier. First, I want to cut the end off. I'm just gonna stand right here and start winching. No, I'm not. So I knew this was gonna be a long pull and the manual says to not pull at maximum capacity for more than 45 seconds without resting for 15 minutes. Now, I'm not pushing this thing anywhere near its capacity. I was feeling the motor with my hand to see if it was getting hot and after several minutes of pulling, it still didn't feel warm at all. So I kept going until it started to feel a little bit warm. So it feels lukewarm. I mean, it's not at all uncomfortable to touch, but I'm gonna let it rest for a little while. I'm curious though, if, if anyone out there has more experience with these kind of winches, when do you have to stop for real? I mean, that whole 45 second thing can't possibly be true. And it was on this pull that that battery finally died. I did not have it hooked to the tractor, so it was not being charged during all of this. Luckily, I can just use the tractor to finish the job. So you can see here I'm using a snatch block, basically a heavy duty pulley, and it allows me to pull using a tree in pretty much any direction. I, I can pull 90 degrees to the driveway without having to put my tractor at 90 degrees, and that just makes this so much easier. I used to do this with chains, which of course can't go through a pulley. Yeah, I am liking this winch setup. Well guys, don't get me wrong, that is no substitute for a real logging setup, but this works on my truck, it works on my trailer, it didn't cost me a fortune, and I can skid logs now, and that's that's hugely beneficial. I don't know if it comes across, it's so much more work without this thing. It's not super fast, it's not a perfect log skidding setup, but, but wow, I'm pretty happy with it. So I think I will uh, bring a set of jumper cables with me so that I can charge the winch battery 
when the tractor's running. I wouldn't want them hooked together when it's not because then it's gonna drain my main battery. Then I can, I can use the alternator on the tractor to keep the winch going longer. That's easy enough. Snatch block. Well, that ought to heat the house for a little while. That's a pretty good sized pile of wood. That winch certainly made it a lot easier getting it out of the woods. Uh, I've tried to do that in the past and decided it wasn't worth it, but this definitely was. This didn't take me very long. So yeah, real happy to have that in the tool arsenal. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you on the next one. Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities. I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach. Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watched me weep. I love everything. Fire spreading all around my room. My world's so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's alright.